what's going on welcome back to auto transport intel let's see are you catching the ads there might be an ad before this that's okay it is friday it is noon central time and you are watching auto transport intel uh let's see here oh i gotta shut up the ads okay the show has started. It's official. We're live. It's Friday. It's noon central time. You know the deal. Cars on the move. We connect dealers, auctions, and carriers. And I'm Jay, your host. I'm about to bring in Ty and Tim because this is the monthly special edition, The Melting Block of Ice with Tim Scoutalis of Max Digital. Before we bring them in, here's what I want you to do. Do me a favor. Please do give a like, leave a like, and also, you see that share button, you click share, click copy, grab the YouTube link, you can text it, email it, share it on social media, send this to your dealer friends and your carriers that want to work with car dealers, because we love talking about that. In fact, Tuesday night is the next roundtable. If you want to join the roundtable, if you got business questions, go to autotransportintel.com, click on sign up, join the ATI Insider, or, and or... Join us in the live chat. What's going on? We got Ty in here with his diamond hands. We got John Garofalo, finest towing and recovery. Good afternoon, my fellow car enthusiasts. Thank you, John, for joining us today. Mike, check one, two, three. Hope everyone's having a reasonable Friday. And Kimberly's here. What's going on, Kimberly? Thanks for tuning in saying hello. Okay, y'all, let's do this thing. We only got 30 minutes, so we better get to it. Tim and Ty. We'll start with Tim. Tim, can you see me and hear me okay? I can hear you fine. How you doing? What's I'm going doing on, Jay? Good to great. see you, man. Oh, mic check. Hey, do me a favor. Say mic check for me. Mic check, one, two. We're good to go. Awesome. And Ty, can you see us and hear us okay? Yeah. Too much wind today? Nah, I, I don't hear it. I think we're good. good. Yeah, I can see you and hear you. Thanks. All right. Well, thank you, man. So, um, So here we are. It's the melting block of ice. Guys, why do we do, what are we doing? Why do we do what we do? Take her away. Because <laughs> we want to wear vests, man. I, I, we want to be like Ty. That's what we want. We want to be out in the transport parking lot eating hot dogs out of lane eight. Oh, uh, yeah. Hey, so thank you. Thank you so much, guys, for being on, you know, my little slice of the, uh, the internet this week. It awesome. was great. I got... Uh, I actually drilled up a lot of interest in, I didn't know, but some of the guys I work with, they're like transporters on the side. So um, hopefully we got a couple new subscribers, new followers for you guys. Um, you're doing a good thing out there. Thank you. We're happy to have you. By the way, Jay, plug uh, Tim's YouTube and his Facebook. I think it's Facebook, right? Oh, yes. yeah. Put that in the live chat. I want him to get more of our guys on his show. I will, I will post a link to that. Okay, great. <laughs> Yeah. So while we're doing that, you got to talk while we're looking for links. Okay. Okay. Uh, so I was at today's Friday and I'm always the guy that's talking about auctions, dealers, and car homes. So I'm at an auction. I've got car haulers and there's dealers all around here running around because yesterday was the sale. So yesterday's sale, I'm on the ground. There are probably over 300 dealers at this auction. I could be a little off. I don't know. Let's just go 200. That's still a lot. Let's say they ran a thousand cars. Let's say they had a 65% sale. What's that mean? There's 650 cars. That somebody has to move somewhere. Who's doing it and why? Wind. So back up a little bit. What? Wind. Find all your links. Time? Wind. Wind. Oh, wind. Yeah. Wind. Thanks, buddy. Son of a bitch. Wind. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway. <clears throat> Point is, is what do car dealers do? They do a couple of things. They sell cars and they buy cars and they trade cars, right? I, I mean, I'm I'm basic 101 guy. What do, what do I know about a car dealer? And that's why Tim's here. They buy cars, they sell cars, and they trade for cars. Okay, that's inventory. So where do they get their inventory? And this is why I like having Tim, because Tim can tell us. Tim, tell us where do car dealers get inventory? Well, the most, you know, the most popular place to get him in, the easiest place for a guy to get inventory is the auction, right? But the, I think the most profitable is directly from the customers. You've heard me say that a bunch of times. Um, so I, I really encourage all my guys to go out and have like a multi-pronged approach when it comes to acquiring inventory. 
But I know for a fact that, you know, traffic to the dealerships is is flat. It's not we're not seeing a whole bunch. We're seeing demand, but because of the supply, and I think Jay was going to we're going to talk about that here today. You know, the supply of new and used car inventory, there's just not a lot of selection out there for the consumers. So everybody's scrambling for inventory. And the first the first place guys think of where can I go to buy a lot of cars quickly? That's the auction. And you're saying that that's traditionally guys go to auctions and buy cars. That's what right. you're saying. Yeah, you're saying fleet, and then, well, who's at the auction, right? We've got um, the the banks are there, so uh, you know the big the big finance companies. We've got the fleet lease companies. We've got the OEMs that run their lease returns. Um, dealerships will run their uh, aged inventory or their trade-ins that they don't want. Um, you know, it's a, just a a big group of guys who are there. And I always say this, the auction is the only place that if you're a seller, it's the only place you can go and get more than you're asking for a car. And if you're a buyer, it's the only place you can go and pay less than what you think a car is worth. But the same holds true on the other side. You can always pay more too. So. All right. <clears throat> so I'm the guy who's saying if you, if you follow the car, follow the dealer, watch what happens. There's things that happen. So, we were talking earlier, you're saying, I think I just heard you say, you know, maybe there might be alternatives to physically going to the auction to buy cars. Is that what I thought I heard? Well, yeah, I mean, I, well, for a while, we'll be, you know, when you say physically going, yeah, I mean, I think most of it is digital these days, right? Are we, you're there on the ground, you were at the sale this week. Is it like the early, you know, even last year or two years ago, the same amount of people are showing up? Oh, that's actually more. Oh. Yeah. And what, what I'm seeing, okay, is I'm seeing guys, and I've said this before, Jay's heard me say this, but I'm here every week at the same place that has the doors open. Mm -hmm. And I'm and I've been going to auctions for 20 years, the same ones. So I see guys go to other auctions that I won't use the name of that are now showing up at the auction that has the doors open. So mm -hmm. I, hey buddy, what are you doing here? Yeah, I I love this auction. I'm coming well, you never come here before. Why are you coming here now? The doors are open. And I can see the cars, I can hear the cars, I can test drive the cars, and I can buy the cars. So <clears throat> what I'm seeing on the ground is opportunity for, I, I call them independent auctions. But this one just recently was purchased by Americas, which I know they have multiple Americas auto auctions across the United States. So that's just what I'm seeing. I'm seeing guys showing up, ready to yeah. do business like they used to. Yeah, I mean, if, if I... The people that I run with, I know, would rather touch, smell, and feel a car. But but there are reasons why they can't do that at every sale. One, not every sale is open. But two, you know, there are platforms out there that offer dealers the ability. Like, heck, I'm in North Carolina. You you guys are in the Midwest. We can talk. I can be multiple places in one day. So that's why I'm surprised to hear you say even – um, now that there are more people than normal showing up to these sales. That's good to hear. Um, I don't know if that's the case though, all over the country. Is it, is that true? I don't know. Yeah. Well, the guys that I talk to, which I talk to car haulers. So yeah. I'm, tr I'm trying to educate car haulers. This is what you need to do. You need to go find an auction that's open. And I'm not, I'm not saying, I mean, I agree with everything you're saying where, I, what my point is, is that, Car dealers have to get cars. They're going to sell a car. Yeah. You know, I was talking to somebody the other day. I said, I've, I've, you too, Tim, we both have seen in our experience in this car world, we've seen a lot of lows and a lot of highs. And one of the things that I've noticed, I don't know about you, a car dealer will figure out two things. He'll figure out how to sell a car and he'll figure out how to buy a car no matter what the situation, right? Mm -hmm. So the fundamentals, I think part of this platform that Jay's built is, is opening up the eyes to the carrier, okay, maybe even the dealer, maybe even the auction, as to how are car dealers functioning today, right? And Jay, Jay's real good about plugging the hybrid, right? You always hear him talk about the hybrid. So anyway, based on what you're saying, you're, and you're with a lot of big names, big guys doing big volumes. And you're saying they're buying online and now they're looking at alternative ways to find cars. Is that right? Yeah. I mean, it, there's just not going to be enough. And I know you guys have talked to Paul a bunch. And if you didn't get a chance to read Paul's article or promote it, please do about the K-shape, you know, recovery that we're going through. 
um, and all of the, the, the perfect storm. It's um, there's just there, we're not going to see the supply of cars, but that doesn't mean. So I guess to your point, maybe that doesn't mean that there's going to be no cars. I mean, there will still be activity at the auctions. Uh, shit's going to get old on dealers. Am I allowed to curse here? Sorry. If, if there's a beat button, maybe, uh, sorry, but cars are, <laughs> cars are going to get old on dealers. They're going to have to sell their aged inventory. They're going to have cars that don't meet their standards. You know, um, not every car is going to be able to go through. So there will be activity at the auctions. Trust me, Cox Automotive will not let the auction business die. Um, there will be cars running through uh, every auction. Um, but, you know, I think there's more than to, to get to more places um, and see more inventory and buy and acquire more inventory. You're going to just have to take more at bats. I mean, some of the guys I talk to, they'll, they'll run through, you know, a couple hundred cars to come home with maybe seven or eight cars. I mean, it's work. It's not like showing up anymore and just being able to buy a load of cars. You got to do your homework beforehand. You got to show up on, on game day and you probably got to do post sales and all the whole other work. It's a, it, it isn't, it's not as easy as it used to be. So uh, last time I think we had you on, you were educating us about the sweet spot, right? Yeah. What's the sweet spot? Is it still the same? <laughs> yeah, it'll always be the same. Um, <laughs> You know the the thing the thing we're going to struggle with, I think, in twenty twenty one, is going to be inventory turn. Um, I'm already hearing I'm hearing from guys right now who typically don't run and, and worry about acquiring inventory, worrying about acquiring inventory, um, which which is a little weird. So it'll be interesting to see what happens here. Um, will guys be running out to um, the auctions and and getting in places they're not. They're not used to going. So yeah, here. I mean, right, yeah. automotive news. Um, talked about it this week. It's uh, I don't. You know, I would be on the side of this article that says I think that at least on the new car side, inventories are going to be low for um, the foreseeable future. When I say where nothing is fixed, you know, ten to eighteen months, and that's a long time in the dealership world. Ooh. But Really? Yeah. But the problem, here's what's going to happen. There's a lot of guys who shifted to a, a, um, a volume based um, uh, business model where they were just turning and burning. You know, I'm, I'm going to sell it. You hear about the number, vol, number one volume dealer, number one dealer in town. That's, they sell a lot of cars. Those are the guys who are at the auctions, turning their inventory. You guys like a lot of trades and they're buying and they work off of small margins. Um, when, when there's not enough inventory, you still have to pay the bills. So what's going to happen? Prices are going to go up, but they're going to need to make more money per car. Um, it'll be interesting to see what happens here. Um, I think it's probably part of the reason why we're seeing a lot of consolidation. A lot of these smaller guys can't play that, you know, that, that new game here where you're going to have to make gross online and all the other things that are happening. So I'm going off on like 10 different directions. I apologize, but... Um, no, it's good because I mean, this is this is what, as a car hauler, we're get, you're you're sharing the mind of a car dealer, right? And the car de and this is what I try to tell guys. I'm like, just because you're a car hauler and you takes you four hours to get two cars out of an auction, really doesn't matter. Listen to what this guy's dealing with and listen to this guy's world and pay attention. And then if you can figure out a way to help, right? Now, here's the catch. This is beautiful. How can you help this guy? Well, you can pay attention. Where are the cars? Well, I'm at an auction. There's cars. What kind of cars you guys want, Tim? Yeah, I, I, I can. <laughs> it's been a long time since um, I've been, you know, on the ground at an auction. But I do remember the days where, you know, you used to be able to talk. You know, it was Katie at, at Big H down in Houston. She was, you know, with Wagoners. And yeah. she'd, be on, she'd be on the ground there and she'd be like, hey, I see a lot of cars. She'd almost call me and say, are you coming this week? Yeah. Because so I want to make sure I have trucks ready. I mean, I don't know yeah. if that's a good sales technique or not, but. No, it's a great. And that's what I tell guys. I said, here's what you do. You get in front of the dealer. So everybody knows we have an, ex dealers have an extravaganza blowout fest every weekend. So Monday's a good time. Afternoon, just stick your head in the door. 
hey, how many did you sell? Which you can get a pretty decent idea if you go around the back before you go inside and look how many trades are there, right? Yep. And if you're really paying attention, you can count holes on the lot. And you can say, it looks like you sold 30 cars. You're probably going to be going to the auction this week. How many trades do you want me to take? And I'll have how many trucks do I need to keep there? How many are you going to buy? And this is this is exactly what I tell guys. You So I'm at, back in the day, I'm at four auctions a week plus transporting cars. So I talked to the car dealer and I said, man, they've got all, I'm, I'm at the auction at six o'clock in the morning, walking around, checking cars in. I see cars that I know Tim wants. Tim, I'm at the auction. Are you on your way? Here are the cars that I know you want. What do you want? What kind, right? It, it, yeah, I mean, that would be amazing service it, right off the bat if guys did that. If you, I would, you'd be my new best friend if you were to call me from the auction. I, I took... I'm telling guys right now that Ty Thompson's at the sale. If you need to know what's going on, I'm sure you might get a couple of calls from my buddies who are. Yeah. For you, know, a you might have a new line of work coming, Ty. <laughs> well, no, that's that's exactly how I built my business. That's how I went from a one ton and a three car to 20 Peterbilt stingers that haul nine at a time. Yeah. I'm always at the auction, which means I get auction time and I get dealer time. So if I'm paying attention to follow the car, right? If Tim's, if I know, I've hauled Tim's cars. I know Tim buys, say, 2015 to maybe 2018 with under 75,000 miles, four-door sedans. And I'm walking through the auction and I'm looking at the auction stickers, right? It's real easy. Here, where's that? I'll show you. Look here. See the sticker? I know that that's not going to work for Tim, but it might work for my buy here, pay here gang. They love those things, right? So I'm calling my buy here, pay here gang. Look what I found. Look what I found. It's just the way I roll. Hey, have you, um, you know, once in a while I used to have a transporter call me. He'd, uh, and he, he'd say, hey, man, I'm loading your cars up here in Kansas City. And this, they got a lot of damage on them. We're, we're, you know, these don't look like the cars that you typically buy is, you know, I don't know if that's something that you promote to do or not, but that was something that guys used to do in the old days. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, and it's a twofold thing, too. You're A, you're building that relationship. You're building the trust, right? Tim, I know your cars. I know you don't buy crap like this. Was you having a bad day? Were you so hung over from the casino last night or the titty bar? Which one was it? Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. Or, you know, like, you know, do we need to get it inspected? I don't know. So I, I, I would agree. It, the guys who can go above and beyond, um, I think especially in today's digital world could really make a difference. It would make you stand out for sure. There you go. So talk to the car dealer. This is what I always say. Talk to the car dealer. Go go look, walk around on his lot. Start looking at the cars. Look at the mile. Look at the condition of the car. You're the transport guy. Find out where he's getting his cars. What is he doing with his old inventory? He'll tell you. And if you can assist, there you go, right? Because we are a service business. And um, that's what we do. I'm going to jump in. This is amazing. If you're just tuning in now, we're halfway through already, over halfway, through the Melting Block of Ice, which is a monthly installment on Auto Transport Intel, on Cars on the Move, the last Friday of each month. And what you're seeing is Ty, Ty made the promise. He connects dealers, auctions, and carriers. Ty is at the auction, and we're talking to Tim, who works with dealers, and we're talking about auto transport, knowing your customer. Because I, I'll tell you what, here's a secret. Before the show, I was showing it. We saw it when I pulled up that image. We saw the load board. And I was telling Tim about the load board before we went live, which is basically the opposite of having a customer. <laughs> and I mic drop. I think I just leave it there. I just leave it there. You know, it wouldn't hurt for... A used car manager to have to live through that load board. I think I have a new respect for the work that goes in to trying to fill that truck. I mean, I knew it was not easy, but man, what a pain in the ass that is. Jesus. Yeah. I'm sorry to every guy I ever I ever screwed over. Wow. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you to options and choices, but why not just go talk to Tim? <laughs> To me, it just makes a lot more sense and a lot less pain. You can negotiate your rate. You can negotiate when you'll have it delivered. You can pick up the phone and call. 
This is what happened. This is what we're doing. This is where we're at. You can negotiate the terms of payment, right? Yeah. So, what what I'm do most just, transporters like to get paid, Ty? How quick do these these guys want to get paid? Just curious. Uh, it depends on the <clears throat> what you're talking to, but 15 days is is good um, for guys that do what I do. So you know, big big companies are 30 days. Mm-hmm. If you if you stick with that company, you can get it to 15. Now, the guys that don't know what they're doing, they want to get paid as soon as they drop the car off. Yeah. And that's, you know, you're in danger land when that starts happening. So yeah. hey, here's 15 the key days is good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I always try to tell everybody, plan on 30, shoot for 15. Okay. That's good to know. I mean, I, you know, this is stuff that I think that I can share with dealers. You know, um, a lot of the guys I work with are at the big stores. But, um, you know, I think it's, listen, we're all about being transparent. And I think I, I, most of the time I'm with you guys, everything's on the table. So I appreciate you sharing. Yeah. Well, and what, so what I try to tell guys is short mile, long dollar. So for me, that's about 150 miles, maybe 200. My goal is to charge you around a dollar a mile, yeah. but it's with the expectation, my own expectation that I will have your cars delivered. I try to do next day, 24 hours, but I can be a little flexible. I could say two days. Depends on how things are going. So as a carrier, we, we I try to encourage guys, build a lane, find a lane, keep going to the same places all the time. And a lot of people don't want to hear that, especially with today's technology where, just like you said, you can be where you're at and you can talk to Ty and Jay who are in two different places at the same time. It's weird, right? You know, I think there's – I'm, I'm with you. I think you should um, build – consistency at a particular location. I mean, you are, you're my KC guy now, you know, but that doesn't mean that with technology, you can't be other places at the same time. You know, right. I, I would imagine that would be easy, easier. Today. Well, you can, and, and that gets into a whole nother topic that really baffles me, which is, okay, I'm, I'm at a different auction and I'm seeing GMs coming in by literally truckloads mm-hmm. where, Hey buddy, where'd you come from? Chicago, Detroit, Okay. Well, if I'm smart, even half smart, I look at the cars that they're unloading that came from Detroit and they've got a sticker on them. You know what the sticker is? It's another auction sticker. (laughs) So if we can all buy cars anywhere and we all know the data and we all know the, what do you call MMR, whatever the price is. (laughs) (laughs) I threw that in there for you, Tim. No No one believes that number. Yeah. But my point is, is why are we shipping cars from north to south when we can buy them when they're already north? I don't understand that. I, can guys still do that today? Not, I'm not on the wholesale side, but if, if you back back in the day, back in my day, you could buy a car at one auction like down in Texas and run it up in Chicago the next week and make money. I don't know if you can do that these days. Hey, Hanny, you want to talk to my friend Hanny? Right. Hanny, you want to talk to my I friend I wonder Tim? that too, Tim. Yeah, I got Tim and Jay. Jay. How are you, sir? Good to see you. This is my friend Hanny. Hanny, what's happening? That's Jay. There's Tim. Tim, how are you? Tim works with Max Digital. Oh. Have you heard of that? No. He's a car dealer guy. Oh, he's a car dealer? Yeah, here, let me get you in here. So, Hanny's wholesale. What do you see in wholesale, Hanny? Wholesale good, actually. I sold 75 from 80 last night, yesterday. 75 out of 80? Yeah. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> See you again. All right, bye. Awesome. That's Hanny. There you go. So he's bringing 75 cars a week to the sale, selling them. Uh, so 80 cars a week. 80. He shoots for 100. Yeah. And he's, so he had 80 in the sale yesterday. He sold 75. He's a big wholesaler here. Yeah. First class. First class, right, Hanny? Yeah. First class. <laughs> Good for so. him. Yeah, great guy. And he he would be a fun guy to sit down and have a real talk with because he owns trucks. So oh, really? he's a wholesaler and he also is a transport guy. And this is where Jay and I get on fire, right? We go back and forth because I say, the reason this guy has trucks is because he can't count on us. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh. Not good. <laughs> there we go, Jay. Uh-oh. <laughs> yeah, why, have- why, does Carv- why does Carvana have trucks? Yeah, I mean, the, it, well, it's, it's it's more efficient for their business model, you know? Right. There's more right. money. In it. So the question is, 
how did they how did it how did it begin who did they work with who do they model after there's some interesting that'd be really interesting to go back in time and find that out when i i started at carmax back in 1997 um we had 16 stores i left we had over 100 but i remember like two or three years in we went and we got our own transporter we got a rollback and um we had gary i remember gary was the truck driver and he would drive the cars between the city and we kept gary busy all day long so they were like oh so then we got a second so then we got mark we had mark and gary i mean it just starts with one truck um you know i don't know where that fits into your guys world and where you guys come down on that but listen um it fit, it's called competition yeah i mean no, it, in a way I, i'm not yeah i mean once you if you're if you're a big enough business well it's like amazon Amazon used to use FedEx and UPS. And then at one point said, you know what? We're going to have our own fleet. So it makes sense, but still it's worth noting. You know, we, we were on that uh, call yesterday. We were talking about some other stuff and you had your guy Robert on. Um, Jay, he's a, he's a, a, a buddy of yours. Robert Olipant. Is- oh, Robbie Oliphant from LMR Company. Robbie Oliphant. Yes. And you know, I, I look forward to talking to him again because he, he was pretty dead set. You talked about the last mile. You challenged him on the last mile. And I've said that a lot with you guys. I think that's the biggest opportunity. I think there's big dollars there in the and, last and, mile. And, and, and I think what we heard was that's just something they subhaul out and they don't really in-house focus on that. Yeah, yeah. And there are a lot of folks capitalizing on that understanding. Same thing with dealerships. I heard a guy at a dealer conference talking about how dealerships should grow their own in-house transportation and i thought does that mean you don't know any good transporters because you're going to get into the trucking business you're in the selling cars business it's yeah no it's it, it's good discussion point and I, I when i hear that when when i hear somebody say now nah, we can't do that boom there you go there's a there's opportunity right off the bat <laughs> um because right. you know we're just not set up for that we're not gonna, car you know do you remember uh, I know we're running up against the clock. Yeah. Car dealers used to say, I'm not going to put my cars on the internet. I'm not going to put prices on the internet. I'm not going to sell cars. Here. You know what? Look where we are today. Um, right. So well, never say, never it, say never. Part of, I think really what we're trying to do here at Auto Transport Intel is we're having conversations. So we, we give direct knowledge, but I, if somebody runs with an idea that they heard and we don't get any credit or any money out of it, that's, man, that's part of what this is all about. Yeah, Let's yeah. come up with some crazy ideas. Yeah. Well, I got a crazy one. Go talk to a car dealer and have a good weekend. <laughs> that, <laughs> for some, that is an insane idea. Uh, well, it's finally getting warm out, you know? That's all there. I told you I'd bring spring back. Yeah. You did it, man. I you did, did it. it. That's it. Ty has been outside every week. Rain, sleet, or snow. Thank you, Ty. Really My appreciate hero. that. You are the hardest working guy in, in the transport business. No doubt about hey, it. It, da- it takes a lot of work. And that and that's the, that's what I try to explain. That to be in the car hauling world, there's a pr- particular element of stupid that is required. Okay. And that's I will not stop. Because your car dealer that's your customer, guess what he's not going to do? He is not going to stop. Cars have been around a long time. Car dealers have been around a long time. They do not stop. They'll call you at midnight. They'll call you at 8 a.m., 6 a.m. They want their cars. They want them now because they're going to sell them. So go talk to a car dealer and have a great weekend. And on that note, we got Tuesday night. We got the round table coming up. This is the Melting Block Advice. Tim, this was an awesome show. Thank you so much for taking the time. You guys are great. Um, I love, love jaw jabbing with you both. We'll see you next month. And then maybe we try and get Paul on here and we get really geeked out on some bar graphs and some charts and all sorts Ooh, of Dude, yeah. this is awesome. Yes. Diamond hands, everybody. Diamond hands to the moon. Thanks, Tim. Thank you. Thank you guys. We'll Have a great later. weekend. Have time. a good weekend. All right. Take Bye. care. Bye bye. And I let them go. That's the meeting. There it is. Man, that was really fun. I really enjoy um, how these. So we got the channel expanding. Now the shows are expanding. Look at that. And look at that. John is ringing the bell. 
We got some cowbell in here. Thank you so much, John. Really appreciate that, buddy. Um, appreciate the contributions to the channel and for everybody for tuning in, spreading the word, the support, the ideas, the input, and the feedback. I know some of this content, the business content, it gets boring. It's not as exciting as some of the other, you know, there's some fascinating things going on. But we're really trying to, what we want to help you do is if you're trying to get in, Auto transport, let us know. If you're in and you have a problem, let us know. Or if you're trying to grow your business, let us know. And we have the Tuesday Night Roundtable coming up on Tuesday. That is going to be awesome. We've already got a lot of people lined up. But if you want to be on the Roundtable, it's not too late. Um, go to... Where is that? I've got a, uh, I got a link here. I'm going to put this link in. If you sign up with ATI, this will put you in touch with Ty. And listen... You know what? Maybe, you know, I I don't know what this is. I don't I'm not ready for a new commitment. J4174832764 just pick up the phone and call Ty and say, or text him. I want to join the round table. I'm in. I, I want to grow my business. This is amazing. I want to talk to car dealers. Whether you're a broker, check this out. This is really crazy. On Auto Transport Intel, we take everybody. Carriers, brokers, dealers, dispatchers, Everybody, if you want to grow your auto transport business, you don't know what you're doing. There's no stupid questions. It's the one safe place where you can ask a question. Guess what? It's not easy and you're not going to get rich right away. Maybe ever. Maybe it's not for you. Okay, there's a lot to this. But we're going to shoot you straight. We want to help. And, you know, one way or another, in or out, <laughs> We want to help you. So this is Auto Transport Intel. Oh, here's a... I did car hauling for two years. I use Central Dispatch, so I hear y'all. You're right. Uh, that's cool, man. I find this content more educational. Thank you. And sometimes, you know, sometimes education, you get, you know, you get full and you get tired and you got to click off and go do something else. I get it. And I tell people all the time, you don't have to tune in to every show and you don't have to always say hello in the live chat. That's totally cool. But Auto Transport Intel, the car shipping business channel, is here to stay. We go live four times a week. Tuesday night's going to be another great roundtable, so please join us. Please do say hello. Please have a good weekend. Please stay safe, and we'll see you soon. Take care.